Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Max Skullbeck, D, 1, 7. Hey everyone, today in the cave we have the creator and administrator of one of the most successful Young Justice groups on Facebook. Young Justice Needs a Season 3 has well over 400,000 followers, and I am convinced that its sheer weight in numbers and active participation in the fan community is one of the reasons that we can all look forward to a Season 3. Max, I am honored to welcome you to the cave and to thank you personally for all you've done to help get us a Season 3. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. I've been a fan for a little while now, and it's great. And yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including both seasons of the series so far, the comics and the video game. If you've not seen, read, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, then consider this your warning. And with all that, let's dive in. So I touched on a one big thing, a couple of things, but one big thing in the intro, Max, but tell us a little bit more about who you are, where you are, and what you do. Well, um, like you said, my name is Max. My name is Max Schulbeck. I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I was born here. Um, I am the founder of the Young Justice Needs a Season 3 page on Facebook. I'm a huge Young Justice fan. Basically anything comic books. Like I love DC, Marvel, uh, Star Wars, stuff like that. Uh, right now I am a student. I go to uh, Brock University studying concurrent education. Yeah basically sums me up i'd have to say what's a concurrent education what is that for those of us in this uh, in the uh, states yeah i don't think that it's called that over there they take your undergrad degree and your bachelor's of education and they combine it together so it like okay. so in six years i will be a teacher oh interesting so you're, yeah. it's like a teaching credential along with a bachelor's degree kind of all yes. wrapped up and together so it's oh, it, they nice. do it all at once so as soon as you're done you can basically go right away and start teaching Oh, wow. That's fantastic. What specific things do you want to teach? I'm studying history, but I want to be a elementary school teacher, like grade four, stuff like that. Oh, nice. My wife's a yeah. teacher. She teaches uh, high school special ed. Oh, and, hey, that's uh, great. Yeah. 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 She loves it. So that's fantastic. So when did you first see Young Justice? I have to assume that it was during the orig original run and not like on Netflix. <laughs> yes. In Canada, I know that it was released a couple months later. I know it didn't come, uh, I think it was, did it come out in 2011 originally? November of 2010. November of 2010. So I think in Canada, we didn't get it until partway through of 2011. We got on like Teletoon or something like that. So okay. I think I watched it about a week after it premiered in Canada. Came. I remember I've I remember it like it was yesterday. I came home from school and my mom was like, hey, I saw this thing. I saw a commercial for it. It's called Young Justice. It's it's all like the uh, it's all the sidekicks and stuff coming together. And I was like, OK, cool. We went upstairs. We watched an episode and I, I was hooked. It was like crazy. I started to freak out because there wasn't another episode. I'm sorry. I have to back that up a little bit. So your mom was like, my mom told yeah. you, gave you a heads up and then yes. hung out with you and watched an episode. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom's pretty cool. Being a uh, being a geek dad myself, I'm I'm uh, I'm super excited to hear that. That's yeah. really cool. So, what was your experience with DC Comics, like in comics in general, before you watched the series? Were you familiar with a lot of the characters that they yes. were showing, or was it a totally new thing? Were you, were you into Marvel first and then DC, or, or what's what's the story? Well, I have all, like I started off with DC. I'd actually have to kind of th my dad's one of his best friends, Tony. Uh, I think when I was about two or three, he gave me a Superman action figure, one of the, um, okay. the Kenner superpower ones, some of the older ones. He gave me that one. Oh yeah, and a couple of comic books. And then after that, I started to collect stuff. And then I found out about Marvel. I've always been more DC. Like I grew up watching the uh, Batman, the animated series, yeah. Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. I even watched like superhero or Super Friends reruns. Like I was totally, <laughs> cra uh, I couldn't like I wanted to see everything. Like the Superman Batman movie, I had that on VHS. Like it was, yeah, nice, yeah. And I watched Teen Titans, but yeah, I had the I had the comic books of like some older Teen Titans stuff, a few Young Justice ones here and there. But I knew Kid Flash, Superboy, 
Robin, and I knew of Garth as Aqualad. I didn't know about like the whole Calder part of that. Right, which was all he, you know, created just for the show. Yeah. Right. So I was a little confused. I'm like, who who is this guy? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. When he first came out, too, I was also wondering about it. I wasn't terribly bent out of shape though, because Garth is not. Garth's a tough one. I am a, actually. Yeah. I'm currently wearing an Aquaman T-shirt oh, right wow. at the moment. But uh, I, uh, Garth was never really my favorite. That kid was really hard to get behind. Um, yeah. So I was like, all right, new Aqualad. Let's see. Let's see what they're doing yeah. with this. And he he ended up being amazing. Yes. Probably one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have made it uh, no secret that I am, uh, that Dick Grayson is definitely my favorite hero across all DC comics to the point where my, here it is, the big reveal. My, uh, my son's actually named after him. Oh, wow. <laughs> so small size geek I am. But uh, having said that, so when I say that Calder runs a very close second to to Dick in the series as my favorite that that says something. So, yeah. um brilliant brilliant job with him. Um so aside from the Facebook group which we'll talk about in detail in just a minute, you've been a part of some other young justice related projects we were talking about. Uh like yes. off off recording. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, sure. Uh it started um on the page. It was probably a few months in. Um I decided I was like, "Hey, I really want season three. It could be a long way off. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I'll make a fan comic. Uh, I called it Young Justice Omega. I got a lot of great artists in. um, My friend Andrew, Franklin, Max, all these guys I I met through the page, actually. They submit fan art. And then I was like, hey, do you want to draw for this fan comic? And it basically was supposed to take place a couple of months after season two. And okay. it was going to mainly focus on, they were going to add Ravenger to the team. So Deathstroke's daughter. Uh, right, and right. It Rose. Was going to, that's, yeah, Rose Wilson. That's Rose, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was going to focus a lot on her. And it was really going to tie in a lot of the favorite villains. I did a lot of polls on the page. Like, who is your favorite guest villain? A lot of people really liked Deathstroke. He wasn't really a guest villain. You know, he was in a lot of season two. But they really liked him. Uh, so from that, I, I did a lot of polls, a lot of questioning on the page, and I took that information and I, yeah, and I just made scripts from there. Nice. How far along did you get? We had 12 issues um, planned out. Issue number one, three, and four were almost entirely completed. And then the other okay. ones had like partial issues or there were a few panels that needed to be redone or the coloring, but we only yeah. ever... Uh, release the first half of the first issue. Okay. The other ones, uh, I'm gonna, I'm planning to release them. So I was gonna say there's gonna be people out there because I know I'm one of those people who are gonna want to see that. Yeah. So finish that up, will you? Make that happen. Yes. For yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and when you do, let us know, and we'll we'll boost yeah. the signal. We'll we'll put something in the in the podcast about it as well. You, as you know, listening to the show, we are big fans of. Fan service and yeah. uh, boosting boosting the signal on stuff that other people are doing because there's a lot of amazing stuff people are doing and it deserves yeah. the yeah. All right, so long before we decided to do this podcast, I was following your group. So four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't even like say the number <laughs> without just laughing with absurdity. Yeah, it's like four hundred and eighteen thousand or something now. Yeah, something numbers. like that right now. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Brandon Vietti and he's not on Facebook very much. Like his Facebook thing is just like his family yeah. and that kind of thing. But he's on Twitter a lot. And I was like, hey, do you know there's a Facebook group out there that's got almost half a million members? He was like, what the what? <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, that's that's mind blowing. So um, yeah, definitely impactful. Anyway, 400,000 plus members is a shocking number for any Facebook group, yeah. period. Yeah. Much less for a single canceled animated series. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how the group started. Well, um, in I'm going to I'm going to guess it was March or April of 2013. The last episode aired. And again, if you didn't hear before, like spoilers, something happened at the end. The whole Wally thing. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he's always been my favorite character from Young Justice, mainly because I loved The Flash so much from Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. 
and how he was Wally yeah. West. Right. And it's, it, it, sorry, I want to jump in here. It's a really interesting parallel. I went back to watching Young Justice again, or excuse me, Justice League again, and it, a bunch of stuff just clicked together. I was like, yeah. oh, this Flash is very is a lot like Wally. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. It is Wally. It is like, Wally, we didn't yeah. find out, we didn't find out it was Wally until like, Starcrossed, I think, when yeah, ex- we yeah. finally found out it wasn't Barry and it was actually Wally, which made sense because Wally was the Flash at the time because Barry was still dead from the yeah. 80s. But I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like my head started spinning of like, is this why they built Wally the way that they kind of did in Young Justice Probably, to be yeah. like this? Because he's not quite like this in the comics. This isn't no, how I would Wally say he's really. Not as, he's not as cocky in that way. No, and he's always had like. He's always had a partner, like someone in the comics that he's been with the whole time. And for so, what the heck is her name is going right out my head? What's Wally's wife's name? I feel um, like anyway, I should know this, yeah. Right. So he's always had someone. So even you know, in the in the flash in the Justice League Unlimited, he's grown up. He's still yeah. acting like this around like Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman, right? <laughs> like just nuts, right? So anyway, it just was an interesting parallel to me. Like it had just kind of like sparked that connection between yeah. the young Justice Wally and this and the Wally from Justice League. But anyway, keep going. I totally interrupted you. When he, you know, ceases to exist or however they phrased it, that freaked me out. Like I did yeah. not see that coming at all. I like that I had to take I, I went back and I started watching season one like I'm gonna say a minute later because I needed to watch like Wally again and i was i I could i could not handle it and i think it was that day i created the page as like i there needs to be something because i know before the last episode aired at least in canada there had been some talks that the show was going to be canceled how they didn't get to finish it necessarily the way that they wanted to that's why it ends with such a big cliffhanger yeah I like then I was like okay if there's not going to be one like if it's canceled I need to do something about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Holding you personally responsible for this season 3. Yeah, of course it was it was obviously uh you know the fans around the oh. world getting it together but I Of course. I cannot imagine that a almost half a million member website didn't didn't have some inertia with doing that it it freaks me out a little bit that there are four hundred thousand people <laughs> that four hundred thousand so, so, people so think- like the stuff that i post on the internet <laughs> <laughs> like, i kept thinking like I, I kept telling caleb when we first started the web started the podcast i was like man if we could get like 10 percent of his numbers <laughs> on our podcast i would be super excited <laughs> So, and unfortunately, the way that the internet and podcasts are set up, we have no idea what our listener yeah. base is. It's really bizarre. But anyway, talking, harking back to that Wally scene, I was looking at that scene from a very different perspective because, because that's a very, that, that scene is an echo of how Barry died in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the 80s. So I'm watching the scene and I was like, oh, Barry's going to die. And then Wally will take Flash's place because that's what happened in the 80s. I'm like, right. that's a cool call about what the heck happened right now. What is that? Yeah. And I was just like, wait, 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 Wall- Wally died? Like, and I knew in my heart, I know he didn't die. Oh, he's, he's not in the dead. Speed Force. He is not yeah, dead. Yeah, he's, of course not. He's in the Speed Force. They'll yeah. pull him back. They might pull a, maybe they'll pull a Flashpoint Paradox or something. Yeah, something I mean, like that. It's Clearly established the Speed Force can do this kind of thing. Yeah. Having said that, they didn't make the the scene any less poignant, mostly because they follow it up. Sorry, I can't even like think about the scene without tearing up. They it's, follow yeah. it up with Art with Artemis going oh. to his house and the door opening, and then she's just crying, and his parents are consoling her. And I'm just yeah. like, okay, I know he's going to come back if they have a season three, but it doesn't matter because the way that they wrote this scene is killing me. Because I'm yeah. feeling what she's feeling. She doesn't know that. His parents don't know that. No one else knows that. We know it because exactly. we're yeah. super geek comic readers. But God, that scene is just heartbreaking. You and know? I had the tiniest oh. little bit of hope. You know, at the end, you see Impulse and he's looking at the statue or like the hologram of Wally. Yeah. I didn't really look very closely. And I'm going to say for about 10 seconds, I thought that it was him. And I became so happy 
And then he turns around and then I was like, no, it's not him. It's Bart in his suit. I was, oh. and then I freaked out all over again. It was, it just hit me like once again, double the amount. Yeah. It was crazy. That was a really good scene too, particularly yeah. with him. Like it as much as he was te- yeah. teasing, he was teasing and mocking Wally so much oh. about like not having the, the Allen blood and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And he was, he was doing it like jovially sort of, but yeah. you could tell it hurt Wally. So to see, to see Bart um, treat that uniform with so much, I'm starting to tear up again. It, it just haven't seen him treat it with so much respect Yeah, in a way like, like posthumously treating Wally with respect and, and giving a nod to who he is and what he did, what he did. And just so well done. So yeah. well done. Anyway, we kind of got sidelined a little bit. We're we going to talk yeah. a little bit more about about these kinds of things in a minute. But um, yeah, here's the question: How in the world did you get that number? They get those numbers. Like I I I I know that there's some aspect of luck, right? And like yes. viral inertia oh, and definitely. random exposure, like maybe on somebody's you know like article on a website somewhere that referenced yeah. you. That kind of stuff we don't have any control over. But yeah, did you do anything to like help? What did you do to get those numbers, man? I, I'll be honest. I never thought that I would be anywhere close to 400,000. Like, Who I would, thought, dude? I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to 10,000. I'll be like 10,000 people. I was like, that would be incredible. Like, I didn't even know if I would ever make it to 10,000 people. Like, that was such yeah. an outrageous number that I thought I was like, I don't know if I can do that. And right. it, it slowly started to increase on Facebook, a lot of pages do like a share for share thing. Like you'll post a page's link and then they'll do the same thing for you. Oh, okay. And so sure. I started to gain a little bit and kind of out of the blue, I got to 50,000. I can't remember how long it took, but it was about a year after I started it, I hit 100,000. And that, like I remember exactly where I was. I was in Germany. It was the middle of the night because they're six hours ahead. And I noticed on my phone, I was like, I, I just hit a hundred thousand. And I woke up everybody in my house because I started to yell. They were kind of angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but what I do, a lot of pages don't do this, but what I decided to do was post only what I say is like pure Young Justice content. I only post Young Justice related like pictures or messages. You see a lot of superhero pages and they'll do like anything dc which is great like i i have pages like that and i i'm fans of pages like that but what i thought for young justice like young justice needs a season three it would be the best and the the way i thought i would get the most people would just to be post young justice stuff yeah that's an interesting point yeah like we because that's a thought process we went through with say fan service right yeah because with the fan service on the show we wanted to boost the signal for people doing young justice amvs and artwork and fan fiction and all that kind of stuff but honestly like i mean there's a lot of stuff out there we still haven't discovered we really need right. people to send us more stuff so we we did broaden it out we're like i mean we're kind of a dc related podcast we want to do more yeah. reviews of like dc animated movies and stuff like that but we want to do that as kind of part of our patreon as kind of an extra thing if people want to hear us talk about under the red hood and give it the same level of historical perspective and detail yeah. that they that we get whelmed then then that's great we know people want it so then we'll take the time to do the thing um but like i don't know like there, i mean young justice has a lot of stuff but it's pretty easy to slip it into going it is well yeah. we'll just put this one thing up here because it's kind of related but sort of or yeah you know what like, i mean um i i'm the also the co-creator of a group uh it's called uh, Young Justice Protest, me and uh, a friend of mine, Andy, created it. And originally, it was basically, again, like pure Young Justice content. But over the years, it started to, people were just posting DC stuff. And I was like, okay, it's the group. Let's let it slide for a little bit. And then it started to become Marvel stuff as well. Oh, and now yeah, it's okay. gone back to its roots where it's just pure Young Justice content again. But yeah, um, yeah like it... it if you start down that path, then it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but then you can kind of get away from your main goal. And I wanted to basically stick with Young Justice. 
Right. I think that's actually, and this may feel like I'm stretching, but this, this to me feels like a parallel to what I talk about in this, in the show, our show a lot about Young Justice. There is a through line to the meta plot, clearly, through both seasons that we got of Young Justice, and they stay on point with very yeah. few exceptions, right? We were just, we just, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, which will probably be a a month and a half before it actually airs. Sorry, because we're so far ahead. It's all good. But we we had just released um, our review of Secrets, so right. it, it's a it's an interesting episode. There's a ton it of is. historical stuff in that episode, but it's also really disconnected from the through line of the rest of the series. It basically, if you took it out, it wouldn't really affect anything. Exactly, and yeah. that's that's a bummer to me because the writer was Peter David, who's brilliant. But I think he's used to writing for um, ensemble casts in kind of your average animated series. So right. I think what happened was is he was like, oh, I got to put all the characters in. Yeah. So now we have now we have three subplots going on parallel to each other where the whole thing at the high school was cute. But we could have removed that and put it into the comics Easily. and really, yeah. really focused on on other stuff having to do with Artemis and Zatanna and that kind of thing. Anyway, my point is, is that the reason why a show like an episode, which is a good episode, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. It, it, yeah, for, for a normal animated series, it would have been fine. But because Young Justice sticks, cleaves so close to its through line and stays kind of true to what its um, intent is, that's where the episodes like that just kind of like jump out at you as being off, yeah. off, yeah. Mes- off message, really. And so um, I think that parallels what you're talking about, really. I mean, if you're going to be doing something like a group or a social media group or a social media presence, know what, know what your point is and yeah. stick to the point, which actually brings me to a question. So you have two groups. You have the Young Justice Needs of Season 3 and the Young Justice Protest. Yeah. Why two Young Justice-related groups and what does one do differently than the other one do? What do I mean, what does the protest part mean even? Well, originally it was, that's kind of where we started the campaign. Like we did a, um, a commenting um, campaign where on the official Young Justice Facebook page and the uh, Warner Brothers, the Cartoon Network, all that stuff, we did, yeah. uh, I think we did hashtag Young Justice Needs a Season 3. And we kind of started that in the protest group trying to get people to come up with different ideas. Oh, I see. So it's it's more of a meeting meeting of the minds kind of place as opposed to a celebration. Yeah, that well, that's what it, that's what it started off. Yeah, that's what it started off as. Yeah. Th- okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. It is considerably smaller. I think we have about thirteen thousand people in the group. <laughs> I want you to listen uh, to what you just said. <laughs> yeah. And then think back. Think back to what you had small. said previously <laughs> about how ten thousand was like shooting yes. for the stars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm. When we hit like a thousand in that group as well, I was I was totally amazed. I never I never thought that we would hit a thousand, but you know now we're at thirteen. <laughs> Did you have any experience with social media administration before? Is this like the first? That was the Young Justice Needs a Season Three, the first group you'd started of that kind. This always surprised people. I had absolutely no experience. Yeah. Like, none. I barely even knew how to use Facebook. And and to be perfectly honest, I love that answer. Because, I mean, it's great if you have a bunch of experience and you're building yeah. a thing or whatever. But, you know, as I've, as I've shared, I want people to listen to our show and be inspired to do yeah. whatever, whatever they're into. It doesn't matter what you're into, right? Like, whatever you're into, be inspired and go, go participate. Yeah. yeah. And you don't need to feel like you have, I need to get a degree and be 40 before I yeah. can actually do something about the thing that I really enjoy, you know? It may work out. You may get 500,000 people or yeah. you may not and you just go on to the next thing. But don't not participate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I love that answer. And you just did it. Yeah. Which is fantastic. But having said that, is there any advice that you can give listeners who are interested in... Because, I mean, the world is about social media promotion yeah. oh, these days. Yeah. <laughs> it, whatever you happen to be. If you're doing comics, you're doing your own music or art whatever it happens to be deviant art you have to be participating in social media to get i think really out there yeah you have to gain your following you gotta send it out there on multiple different platforms like we created the twitter it's not it's not very big but we wanted to make sure because there were people who kind of knew about us 
but had like they didn't have facebook so i was like okay i'll create a twitter you'll be able to find out about us there yeah and that's slowly growing as well it is but like and there's a thing in in writing if you're an author or particularly a first-time author if you have a plat with a, what they now call a platform, right? You're, you're a, a publisher, a publicist is going to ask you, well, what's your platform? Like what, what's the size of your website? How many people are on your mailing yeah. list? How many people on your Twitter account? How many people are on your Facebook account? Because if you can hand them and say like, look, I have 10,000 people following me online. Then the publicist says, oh, sweet. We have probably at least 5,000 sales yeah. off of that. Yeah. Okay, now we now we're going to we've never heard of you from Stephen King. We don't know you. So, we're we'll 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 put our money behind you to get this book published because we know that we can get some of our money back. Yeah. Right? So, so what advice can you give give listeners about social media? Do you have anything that you might be able to offer them up and what have you what have you learned? Yes. Well, the first thing, the first thing I would say is uh, and this is more going to be like Facebook page kind of thing focus because that's really what my my experience is in. Uh, definitely yeah, be dedicated. It like again, I it's it's really it's luck that I'm at the point like at four hundred thousand because like I've tried to make other pages. Some of them get to like twenty thousand stuff like that, but I doubt I'll have another page. I I know I say twenty thousand like it's still it's small twenty thousand, but it is still. If you're you really like, think about it, it you're is brushing still, it off like a mere twenty thousand. Uh, twenty thousand. Ah, pshaw. Yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't. It doesn't happen overnight. You gotta. You have to stick with it. Like I try to post once a day. A lot of the time I can't now because I am in university, so I am uh, busy. But try to yeah. consistently post. Get your fans engaged. Like I do a lot of stuff. I do an opinion based thing. Like who is your favorite character in Young Justice? Why? Comment below. And then a lot of people share it because they know their friends watched it with them right. like as well. So then they comment and that helps you gain a wider target audience. Like other people are finding out about it. You're making it a partic- participatory participatory yeah. experience instead of yeah. just something you're watching go by in your feed. Exactly. Right? Something people want to have a conversation about. That, that's great. I love it. I would say try to find pages that are like you. When I started up, there was a Young Justice page called Squads of Young Justice. And they had about 4,000. They did a lot of campaigns. They eventually kind of started to die down a little bit. And now they, I think the page is shut down. I don't even know. But a good friend of mine, Colin Bass, he was behind Young Justice Abduction. It was a fan series, kind of TV show thing. Ooh, I think I've, I've heard of that, actually. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, he created it with a couple of friends of his. He, who do they, I can't remember who they work with, but he had done the, um, I think they called it the Crimson Blur or something like that. They did kind of a TV show before. And he, uh, man, I looked up to call, like, I still look up to Colin. He's a great guy. And I, I saw, I was like, this is somebody who is doing something that they love and they want to do a season three type thing for the fans and for themselves. I just actually just did a quick, quick Google, everybody of young justice abduction. And it just popped right up with a couple of yeah. episodes and the first two look like it's Robin and Nightwing. So I am absolutely yes, watching this is, after yeah. we get done. Uh, so this will probably be our fan service for this particular episode <laughs> in addition to you as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it is a it is a great series. So nice. okay, yeah, so cool. they were definitely like an inspiration kind of thing. I wanted to be able to reach fans in kind of a personal level that they did. And yeah. Fantastic. I think that's great. Having it be a participatory process is, I think, key for us. One of the things that I found to be very helpful for me, both as a role-playing game designer and as a podcaster, is talking up other people's stuff. And I don't mean like just talking up other people's stuff because you want them to give you something, right? Right, yeah. That's not what I'm talking. People people know when it's, that's what it is. Yeah, like when it's genuine. Yeah. Exactly. If you love something, basically like you just did with Young Justice Abduction, (laughs) if you love something, talk about it. Yeah. Don't talk about it because you want because you feel like the creators owe you something. Right? Don't talk about it because 
you want to give your smash your opinions or crush something else that somebody else enjoys. Instead of talking about the negativity, talking about the things you don't like uh, about a show or that you don't like a show, if you spend that same energy talking about the shows you do like, more there's more likelihood you're going to get more of the things you do like instead of more of the things you don't definitely, like. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. That's my that's my opinion, right? So, uh, in addition to that, I, when I'm when I'm on your page, what I see it, it's just a lot of positive stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of encouraging stuff. It's a lot of supporting other people. It's a lot of that kind of thing. Like, yeah, that's what it is most of the time. When you go, I mean, of course, you get half a million people. You're going to get some. You're going to get a mixed bag. I unfortunately get a surprising amount of hate mail, but it's not really hate mail. It's a lot of people who are confused and they think that I am like an official DC page. And they're like, why oh. the hell did you cancel my favorite show? What is wrong with you? And I'm, and then, and then I have to tell them, I'm like, no, I, I'm a fan. I want season three. And then they are, they're very apologetic. It's, it's great. But uh, right. a lot of right. people no. assume that it's kind of like that we're official because we have such a huge following. Yeah, you're. Cr- I think you're. You may have more numbers than the official Young Justice page. Possibly, <laughs> I I'm not, I'm not exactly up, sure how many they have, but uh, yeah, maybe. I I may just I may just look that up here in a minute. But yeah, I, I think the fact that you have a positive uh, experience where people can come enjoy the thing that they enjoy and then just you know have a positive experience about it. Yeah, particularly you know I mean. I think every generation thinks that, you know, their generation is having the hardest time in the world, (laughs) but right now it's a little tough for some people. And so I think going out and having something positive that they can enjoy at least gives them a break. You know what I mean? Get some footing. And if you keep things positive and you keep things on the solid through line that you have, I think those are really, really good pieces of advice. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously I wanted to have you on the show because of the absurd and awesome success of the Facebook page. And to say thank you, by the way. But also, when you and I started talking, you brought up one of the reasons that you love Young Justice so much. And quite honestly, it's one of the reasons I do as well. And in fact, it's one of my favorite things to talk about on our podcast in that are cameos. Yeah. <laughs> the they... cami- the cameo, <laughs> the cameos and the callbacks, man. So yeah. many nods to the comics. So many echoes of storylines from the comics. Easter eggs in the background of scenes. Even things like the, the, you know, the only two Marines that have speaking parts in Failsafe, both being tied to established DC character properties, <laughs> like, and you don't even know until you yeah. look at the credits or do a bunch of reading on the YJ wiki, you know, or whatever. And you're like, wait, wait, that's supposed to be Corporal Lance? Like, and then it just cracks open this whole box, right? So yeah. what, what cameos jump out to you as some of your favorites? Well... Pro- it's probably a widely favorited one as well, but the Jason Todd uh, hologram. <laughs> right. And <laughs> right. it's, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he has never appeared in a DC animated TV show. He was in the Under the Red Hood or the Red Hood movie, which Under was the Red great. Hood. Yep. I love that movie. Yep. Like I had the, uh, I had the comic book. It was great. But they, in Batman the Animated Series, it went from Batman being alone. Batman with Dick Grayson to and then Batman Tim. being alone and then Tim Tim Drake. It was they skip over Jason. Well, and I talk about that a little bit in in uh the Secret Origins Robin episode, but I mean my theory about that is the idea that you so you have Dick, you've established Dick, right? And the way they started the Batman animated series, which was really interesting, was that they said they don't want Robin. They just don't right. want him, right? And they said, okay, we can have Robin in the universe, but he's at college and he's not a kid anymore and that kind yeah. of stuff. So when Dick finally does come into the episodes, it's kind of cool because it's like, oh, they have this established history and he's his own character and blah, blah, blah. But they gave him Tim's outfit. They made him a hacker because because he's a modern Robin. He just needs yeah. to be a hacker, right? And so because of that, those are the things that made Tim kind of unique from Dick and Jason. So yeah. when they introduced another Robin... Jason was dead. They also knew Jason at the time wasn't a popular character in general. But if they're going to introduce Tim, then they have to kind of mishmash, you know, they mishmash Tim and Jason together because that Tim in the animated series was also kind of rough around the edges, street he kid. Was. Yeah. You know, he was basically, he was basically Tim Todd, <laughs> you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, and so in, in Young Justice, we kind of see the same thing, unfortunately. Like, I don't think Tim got a lot of airtime in the second season because, honestly, I'm not sure what you do with him once you make, you know, 
Tim Grayson, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the first yeah, that, season. That's that's true. He he wouldn't really have anything that is unique to him anymore. It was, right. was kind of taken away. <clears throat> So he's got to have so so I'm sure he's as good with computers and everything oh, of course. as yeah. as Dick as Dick is right. But I think that they're going to have to if they're going to have Tim advance to Red Robin and have him in any storylines, they're kind of going to have to focus on some other stuff. Like they're going to have to make him super techy. They're going to have to make him you know with this photographic memory. They're going to have to do things that are very different than Dick. That he still has the skill set as him. He can still ninja out and do stuff like he did in the second yeah. season. But he needs to have some things that make him maybe the more intellectual detective than yeah. than Dick. Like Dick, Dick's definitely a detective, but you could oh, see he's more of a combat, hands-on, charismatic leader kind of a character. And you can really probably this is my thought anyway. What's your thought about it? Like, no, I would agree. I would Tim. No, I would agree with that. Yeah, because especially since you know everybody wants Jason Beck, right? You yes. know everybody. Everyone wants, everyone wants, wants him as the Red Hood. Hood. Oh, that's pro- when I do a post. Who would you like to see in season three? I think the most common answer is Jason Todd as the Red Hood. Yeah, I think it would be great. And if they can tie it into the the ultimate meta plot about things as well. Um, Honestly, you may have heard this. I I voted to kill Jason Todd back in the day. I shelled out my 50 cents and made the toll call. Because the Jason Todd in the comics back then, he was terrible. He was a terrible, right. terrible character. He didn't grow. He had no character growth. He was just a pain in the butt. He was not. He was not good, like or interesting. And they didn't know what to do with him. In fact, the, actually, the first incarnation of him before Crisis on Infinite Earths, he was exactly Dick Grayson. Oh, he was wow. an acrobat whose parents were killed. Like they had to retcon his origin, and they had his origin be that he was, you know. Batman found him trying to steal the wheels off the Batmobile or whatever. Yeah. So they had to change him up and they, but they changed him up so much that it was just like, no, you've changed him so much. He's, he's no one I care about, you know? Right. But then when they, when they brought him back, which I thought was actually a brilliant way they handled it as the red hood, they took his character and maybe made him his own. Like Jason Todd is as great as Jason Todd. He just wasn't great as Robin. Yeah. Right. And, Hopefully they can fold him into the series and have it make sense. Yeah, you know? that, I think that would probably be the most difficult part because they're great when they introduce characters, but they they'd have to do it with Red Hood. They'd have to do it the right way. They can't just throw him in there and just be like, right. "Oh, hey, by the way, he's always been or he's kind of been around." Like they they'd have to do something to really introduce him properly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So what uh, what other cameos? jump out at you well lobo i i like to see lobo because <laughs> he was he was in like superman the animated series he was in justice league i think he might have been in a justice league unlimited episode as well and i had a couple of comics where he was in and i always just thought like this guy he's a, he's a cool like he is a cool he's a tough guy he was always just interesting yeah. to me and yeah yeah yeah, and they did a very um, – I liked how they made his bike a lot bigger and like how – it's kind of hard to hard to explain, but they did a very good version of – like in my opinion, the Young Justice version of Lobo was very well done. No, I, I definitely agree with you. And he, he establishes his presence and I love how Jon Stewart's like, you know – Lobo, yeah, we know him. Yeah, <laughs> we we know this guy. The Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy know this guy, and so they they give that sense of richness of history and vastness of the universe. Yeah. You know, even for a character that had what five minutes of screen time. Yeah, you know? he was. There's the one scene really, and and then he's gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to get into talking about that episode. Actually, once we finally get there. Um, anybody else that jumps out at you? I mean, it doesn't even have to be a character. I, I love how you pulled out Jason. I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. He and he wasn't even a character. He was just an yeah. image in the background. You know, yeah. um, but, um, season one wise, I would have to say when we get to see the picture of the uh, Justice Society of America in oh, the episode yes. about like Red Volcano and all that stuff, and yeah. in particular, I love that we got to see a young Jay Garrick in the picture. And then we get yeah, to yeah. see old Jay Garrick in season two, putting on the helmet, yeah. like getting the costume out, actually like running alongside with the Flash and Kid Flash, and, and like that was 
dream come true right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, love, I love when he says she's already going to kill me for putting on the helmet. It, it, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, like that was they did that so well. And yeah, like I think Wally West, I like him as Kid Flash and he was great as the Flash in um in Justice League, but I think Jay Garrick might be my favorite Flash just I don't know, I always I always really liked the the helmet or the, like the hat. I just always thought he was he was cool because he was way before my time. Yeah, he yeah. was kind of someone I thought I was like, "Oh, he's like the old Flash." And he was, right. I don't know, he was a guy I always kind of looked up to. So that was, that was really cool. Like personally, it was really cool to see him. There's a lot of sense of history, a lot of weight yes. to that character. Yeah. yeah. And that, in that same photo, the one I want to see is Alan Scott, the Green Lantern oh, from that. He's the best. I would love to see, I would love to see that. Alan Scott's one of my favorite. I, I had the, the honor of meeting his creator before, oh, right wow. before he passed away at, uh, <laughs> at Comic-Con and I. I told him, I said, I said, I, I love Hal Jordan, but I have to tell you, Alan Scott's my favorite Green Lantern. Yeah. Um, and he said, <laughs> he said, you know, when I made him, because I think he was in his 80s, he was like, you know, when I made him, I just didn't think he would last this long. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, because I think Alan Scott was created in the 40s or whatever, and this must yeah. have been, God, when was it? I want to say it was 2000. It might have even been in the 90s, but I think it was early 2000. I'll have to look it up. But, um, yeah, it yeah, pretty amazing, pretty amazing touch of history there. Yeah. Um, so I would love to see him as well. Um, awesome, man. So um, I I have to hear the story. Among I ask this to all my guests, but I absolutely have to hear the story of how you heard about that your website was now irrelevant, that we were now getting a season three. <laughs> It's not irrelevant, guys. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> Ooh, uh, so many people message me being like, hey, by the way, there's a season three. You need to change your name now. Change the name. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to ask you that too. Did you consider yeah. changing the name? We have. <laughs> we have considered it. We're, we're coming up with some ideas. <laughs> I love the, by the, by the way, have you heard yeah. there's a season three? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I don't think I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I was, I was can't remember what time it was but i'm pretty sure it was i have it written it was november 7th and i got all these notifications on my phone and it's like you have i think it was 30 unread messages on young justice news in season three and i was like okay someone something i was happened. like ah oh, something happened on the page someone said something bad i've got to got to resolve this issue oh right right yeah, of course because I, I thought you know maybe somebody said something they shouldn't have or someone was complaining and then i go and i check the uh because you can post to like the pages feed like fans yeah. can post in like they post a lot of art and i had to scroll down for a while and it was just all different websites being like young justice season three has officially been announced so right away i was happy but i was like you know what they've burned me before They've, oh yes, been, we have been. Tr I went through and I checked all of the sources, and then when I finally was really sure that it was official, I totally freaked out. I was so happy. Yeah, unbelievable. Called right, a bunch Caleb of people. And I talked about it a lot too. Our phones were blowing up, and people were Facebook messaging us and texting yeah. me, and our Twitter account was blowing up. It was, it was amazing. Unfortunately for us, it also meant that a bunch of the interviews we'd already set up got yeah, canceled because that, then, the like. Issue. I was literally going to interview Greg the next day. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, I just signed the contract. I, I can't do I can't, it. I can't. I'm like, no. Uh, anyway, and they also pulled one of the writers out from under me just recently too. So the good news is I know one of the best writers, one of, a writer of my favorite episodes is on contract. Well, that's so, good. Which is pretty great. The downside was, again, I was literally interviewing her the next day. So uh, it was just... Oh, it's like, God, you're killing me. It's the best reason yeah. to cancel, but you're freaking killing me right now. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. So um, after all of that, man, um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Anything else you want to talk about? Hmm. Any projects coming up or anything? Well, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you a question, actually. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, he's turning the tables on me. Oh, go. It's kind of just what? like a personal thing. If there was any character who didn't show up in season one or two, that you would hope they show, other than Red Hood, because we already discussed that, who would you want to be in season three? 
Whoa, somebody yeah. who hasn't at all showed up. Man, that's a tough one, actually, because I want to see the Hawks. I want to see more of the Hawks, but they're they're in it. They just don't have any dialogue. I want to see how Greg and Brandon manage to reconcile their bonkers history um, into Young Justice. Uh, yeah. Are they space cops? Are they reincarnated gods? What are they? Exactly. Um, Justice League Unlimited explored all of those. Yeah, they're they're everything all mashed together. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I don't know if there is. Just because every time I think of someone, like I'd love to see Ted Cord, I'd love to see a flashback more with him in it, but he was technically in the show. Yeah, um, they had, they had I, I think two two flashback scenes with. Them. Oh, okay. Now I feel ridiculous because I've been talking about this forever. Pretty much the entire Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> So I've talked about a bunch on the show how they have the planet of Rimbor, which is the home of Ultra Boy in the future of right. you know uh, the Legion of Superheroes. I just we just dropped our Superboy episode today, where I talk about, of course, the Superboy back in the day was the inspiration for the Legion of Superheroes in the thirty thirtieth or thirty first century, um, and how that got incorporated in. I I want to see that. Also, Miss Martian has a villain who's Sun Girl, who is apparently related to Sun Boy from the Legion. Wow. And so that may that may be pulled in. Um, they don't mess around. Like somebody somebody on the show is definitely a Legion fan because not only do you have Rimbor, the uh, uh, Amazo, the android, ha- instead of having all of the Legion's powers, he seems to he seems to pull on them one at a time. Yeah, which I, makes I did him notice e- that, yeah. Which makes him easier to fight and deal with, which I think is much more like like interesting in general, but that also duplicates Ultra Boy's powers from the Legion because he has all of Superman's powers. He just can only draw on one of them at a time. And right. also Rimbor is his home world. So I'm like, okay, I'm seeing way too many potential parallels to the Legion. And I am such an enormous Legion of Superheroes fan that I would love to see anyone from the Legion that would show be up cool. in, in the show because, I mean, I, I enjoy the Legion of Superheroes animated series that came out in the mid like two of 2006 ish. Yeah. Still, still wasn't quite my Legion and a young justice version of the Legion of superheroes. I would probably just pass out. I would just pass out. It I would know be what really to do. Cool. I would be, a, I would wake up and it would be an entirely new world for me. Um, so that would be it. That's my answer. Woo. That only took a ridiculous amount of time. It's a difficult so question. Thank you. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and thank you for stumping me. Oh my goodness. That's going to be the selling point of this episode. All right, man. Thanks so much for spending time with us in the cave, Max. So Thank where can you. people find you Find you out here on Earth Prime? Um, well, me personally, uh, you can find me on Twitter. I don't really post anything. Um, uh, but you can find Young Justice Needs a Season 3. It's at YJ Needs a Season 3. You can find us on Facebook, Young Justice Needs a Season 3. You just type that in. Um, there's a chance that we're also on Tumblr for anyone who's on Tumblr. Uh, I'll get back on that. Yeah. Well, give us the links to all that stuff. We'll have links in the show notes so people can just link right over to the stuff for uh, awesome. And uh, also let us know about this comic book project. We will keep posting about that as well. Do it. All right. Thanks to everyone for sharing some time with us. You can find us on Twitter at the YJ files on Facebook ourselves at slightly less than 400,000 people, but you know, we're trying at www.facebook.com slash crashing the mode and on our personal website, www.crashingthemode.com. Obviously, if you're already on Facebook and haven't joined Young Justice Needs a Season 3, then you should probably have done that last week. Uh, Share that group with your friends who love the show. Take a moment to shoot Max and everybody who participates on on that page a thank you for being a huge part of getting us all more Young Justice. So you can find a parallel group on Twitter, as he just mentioned, at YJ Needs a Season 3. And that's starting to grow as well. So let's get that moving and make sure Max uh, has to stay, spend all of his university days on social media. Uh, If you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review on iTunes, Google Play, or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings really do help others find our show. Uh, If you leave us a rating or review, please let us know, especially if you're outside of the United States, because we have to look a little harder for those. If you'd like to support the show in getting more reviews, discussions, interviews, and so much more, please consider linking over to our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash crashing the mode and pledging a few dollars a month. 
Uh, as a thank you, we're offering access to our episode outlines, Young Justice-inspired role-playing game adventures, in-depth articles and sub- on subjects we've only touched on in the show, a free copy of the Masks RPG from Magpie Games, and even the opportunity to play in a quarterly superhero game run by one of us. And even though Season 3 has been officially announced, please continue to spread the word to friends and family about the series. Hashtag keep binging YJ on Netflix. Hashtag buy YJ comics on Comixology to get us more tie-in comics and get yourself up to speed for the Season 3 premiere. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.